Beyond Cholesterol, Freeing Yourself from the Tyranny of Your Cholesterol Numbers. In this video, I share my ideas about cholesterol and why I think a healthy diet is far more important than drug therapy. However, this video is for educational purposes only and is not meant as medical advice and no one should stop statin therapy or other medications without first conferring with their health professional. Atherosclerotic plaque building up in arteries throughout the body, leading to heart attacks, strokes, blindness, and amputation, is the greatest killer in the Western world today. As plaque builds up in the artery wall, the plaque can soften and then rupture and then set off the formation of a blood clot that can block blood flow downstream in the artery. If this happens in an artery in the heart, the result can be a catastrophic heart attack that kills one American every 40 seconds. If an arterial blockage or bleed occurs in the brain, a major stroke can ensue. Or if artery disease causes a series of mini strokes signified in this scan by the many white areas of scar tissue pointed out by the red arrows, the accumulated damage from these mini strokes can lead to diminishment of mental function and eventually lead to senility through a vascular dementia. Even the feared Alzheimer disease involves damage to the blood vessels in the brain. Now, most cardiologists get concerned about elevated cholesterol numbers since people with elevated cholesterol levels are more likely to experience heart attacks. Consequently, atherosclerosis is regarded by most cardiologists as a relentlessly progressive part of aging and that most of them believe that everyone with elevated cholesterol levels will eventually suffer artery clogging, heart attacks, and strokes. Because most cardiologists do not talk to their patients about changing the diet that is causing the artery disease, this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, of course. They all get heart attacks and strokes and need stents. That's right, doctor. If you don't talk to them about changing your, their diet, that's exactly what you're going to see. But we're talking about a different course of management here. It's now clear that most everyone who's been eating the standard Western diet for several decades has atherosclerotic disease to some extent in their artery walls. It's now also clear that the artery clogging plaques cannot be burned out through long distance running. Marathon runners who eat the standard Western diet have just as bad atherosclerosis as their sedentary counterparts. And despite our current infatuation with an oil rich Mediterranean style diet, Vegetable oils are not healthy for your heart. They actually injure the artery walls and make them more stiff and inflamed. Now, if one goes to a cardiologist today for an evaluation of your heart and blood vessel health, you're surely going to be asked many questions that have numbers for answers. How high is your cholesterol? What is your total cholesterol HDL ratio? What is your cholesterol particle size? What dose of statin are you on? Numbers, numbers, numbers. In my opinion, all these questions miss the point. I think the question is not, how high is your cholesterol? In my mind, the question is, how healthy are your arteries? What's really happening to the precious endothelial cells that line the arteries and in the arterial wall itself? That answer cannot be determined just by knowing your total cholesterol number or the size of the cholesterol particles. This is a complex, active, inflammatory disease process that requires the eye of a biologist, not a statistician. The cholesterol level has only a very crude correlation with what is actually happening in the artery wall. More important than the total cholesterol level is the amount of oxidized cholesterol. Now, why is this important? Well, let's consider some facts about the cholesterol molecule and oxidation. First, we must understand that cholesterol is not an evil substance to be obliterated by any means possible. It is the rootstock molecule with which your adrenal glands, by changing the side group sticking out of the cholesterol nucleus, make important steroid molecules like cortisol and aldosterone, which are essential for life. Every woman's ovaries uses cholesterol to make estrogens. And every man's testes uses cholesterol to create testosterone. And every cell in our body uses cholesterol for the manufacture of vital cell membranes and many other functions. That's why your liver makes cholesterol every minute and releases it into our bloodstream. Fortunately, 
Your liver makes all the cholesterol your body needs, and you don't have to eat anyone else's cholesterol, like a passing cow or pig or chicken, to be healthy. Quite the contrary, as we shall see. Incidentally, the main action of statin drugs is to block the liver's ability to make cholesterol. And that maneuver may have serious adverse effects throughout the body, but more about that later. Now that we've refocused our ideas about the cholesterol molecule, let's consider the process of oxidation. Oxidation, the chemists tell us, is the ripping off of electrons from one atom by another atom as illustrated here as the atom on the left has an electron pirated away from it by the oxidizing atom in the upper right. We all know what happens when iron is oxidized to iron oxide. We see that as rust. Well, cholesterol molecules are also easy to oxidize, and there's lots of electron-hungry oxidizing molecules generated by the modern Western diet. The very act of cooking meat creates oxidized cholesterol in every burger and fish fillet and chicken breast. And since people eating a cheeseburger usually eat their fried burgers on a white flour bun with sugary ketchup, fried potatoes cooked in hot vegetable oil, and a cola drink laden with high fructose corn syrup and phosphoric acid, this kind of meal puts a tsunami of electron-hungry oxidizing molecules into the bloodstream hour after hour after such a meal. More oxidizing agents can enter the bloodstream through air pollution, even indoor air pollution, and secondhand cigarette smoke. So oxidizing agents abound in the bloodstream during and after a fast food meal, but even an after meal thought of as healthy, like a broiled salmon steak, there can be a flood of oxidized cholesterol molecules and other substances that can rip electrons off cholesterol molecules throughout the bloodstream, creating the feared oxidized LDL particles, like the cholesterol peroxide molecules shown here, which are the main instigators of the process that forms atherosclerotic plaques. Here you see the process of how oxidized cholesterol molecules contribute to plaque formation as it unfolds in a segment of the artery wall. The LDL particles circled in the upper left red circle in the presence of these common oxidizing agents become the oxidized cholesterol particles in this red circle that insinuate themselves into the wall of the arteries as shown above. These oxidized cholesterol particles are very irritating to the artery wall and their presence makes the body some a type of circulating white blood cell from the bloodstream called monocytes to enter the artery wall to engulf and dismantle the oxidized LDL particles. In doing so, they make things worse by generating even more free radicals, here labeled ROS for reactive oxygen species, another name for free radicals the chemists give, and this transforms the macrophage that has engulfed these particles into a foam cell, pointed to by the thick red arrow, which is a veritable cauldron of free radical activity that oxidizes and damages the surrounding proteins and other structural molecules of the arterial lining and the arterial wall, which is the first step in plaque formation. And that's what these atherosclerotic plaques really are. They are inflammatory lesions. These arteries have been injured. Meal after meal of cooked animal protein, fried foods drenched with oxidized vegetable oil, alcoholic drink after phosphoric acid-laden soda, sugary dessert after processed junk snacks, cigarette after cigarette fights with the boss that raise cortisol levels, episode of uncontrolled high blood pressure, all these repeated injuries to the artery wall, meal after meal, day after day, month after month, year after year, damages the delicate endothelial linings and the underlying arterial wall structures. The inflamed atherosclerotic plaques are the body's response to these repeated injuries. So, the lessons for patients and our medical professionals alike are that atherosclerotic plaques are not just globs of grease that stick to the artery wall because the LDL level is too high. These are inflammatory lesions incited by the oxidized cholesterol and other artery-damaging foods repeatedly put through the bloodstream by the owner of the arteries. 
I hope you can see by now, they're just asking how high is your cholesterol level or what is your cholesterol particle size really does not give us the information we need to understand what's really happening inside that artery wall. Yet people, including cardiologists, put tremendous and I think unjustified import onto the total cholesterol number and the other values of the standard lipid panel. Yes, they roughly do correlate with the risk of having a heart attack, but they don't tell the owner of the arteries how healthy those vital structures really are. And just driving down the cholesterol levels with the statin drugs does not do much to quench the inflammatory fires that are destroying the artery wall and leading to plaque formation. The elevated LDL number may just be a marker for the people eating the artery-damaging food rather than being the actual cause of the plaque formation itself. But because the doctor doesn't want to risk having his patient having a heart attack or stroke, out comes the prescription pad. And the prescription for statin drugs is usually given with the tacit direction. Here, just take these tab tablets of statins every day and you can keep eating your fried chicken and chili dogs. Just don't miss a dose of your pills. And even though your muscles ache and your liver becomes inflamed, just keep taking those pills, but do stay in touch. I don't think that kind of medicine truly serves the patient, nor does it do much credit to the physician who's supposed to treat the cause of disease, and I don't think that strategy really gets to the heart of the problem. So what do statins actually do? As I said, their primary action is to block the liver's ability to make cholesterol. Now this concerns me due to cholesterol's central role in so many essential functions in the body, like hormone production and cell membrane synthesis. But statins do exert a moderate anti-inflammatory effect. And given the inflammatory nature of plaque formation process, many researchers believe that this anti-inflammatory action is its main benefit in slowing down development of atherosclerosis. But statins offer far from complete protection. At their best, statin drugs seem to reduce the risk of heart attacks by only about 25% and you have to treat hundreds of people for years before showing that one heart attack has been prevented. Is this the best we can do to counteract the Western world's number one killer? Since we've seen that formation of atherosclerotic plaques is essentially an inflammatory process, I think that inflammation is where our diagnostic test should focus. Fortunately, now, there are many medical laboratories who can easily measure markers of inflammatory damage in the arteries. Let's look at the marker molecules that can tell us if our arteries are inflamed. In this diagram, one can see these important marker molecules that can help determine if a person is at risk for plaque formation. The progression of the process is seen as we move from left to right in the diagram, from early plaque formation to the softening and eventual rupture of the plaque. To begin with, on the far left, the amount of oxidized LDL cholesterol is measured. And I think this is a good number to know for the reasons we have discussed. Then, we measure the inflammatory molecules that the oxidized cholesterol incites. And they are seen as we move to the right along the top of the artery diagram starting with the inflammatory prostaglandin 2, a sign of early artery inflammation, here designated as F2-isoPS. Now, as the plaque formation continues and plaques begin to actually develop in the artery wall, proteins like high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, here designated as HS-CRP, and microalbumin are then detected. Then, as plaque formation begins to progress and the plaques begin to soften and then to liquefy and become unstable on the way to rupturing and setting off formation of a possibly lethal clot, then markers of the softening appear in the bloodstream like myeloperoxidase, here shown as MPO, and phospholipase, designated as LP-PLA2. They appear indicating softening and perhaps imminent rupture of the plaque. These are the scariest markers that should concern both the owner of the arteries and their doctor. Incidentally, all the way to the right, by the time the troponin T or CK-MB bands on the far right show up in the bloodstream, the heart attack has already happened. 
those heart those tests are only done in the hospital emergency room and cardiac care units for diagnosis. Now, in my opinion, these values give a far truer picture of what's really happening in the artery walls than a mere total cholesterol value or an LDL number. This is why I believe that a healthy vegan person running a diet of whole plant foods through their arteries, meal after meal, without excessive oils and sugars and salt, and whose arteries are not inflamed by virtue of checking these inflammatory markers, is at little or no risk for plaque formation, even though on a given day their liver may need to keep over 200 milligrams of cholesterol in their bloodstream so the person can make all the steroid hormones they may require. Also important to realize, cholesterol levels vary from week to week, even day to day, and we're starting to understand that a transient elevation that goes up and goes down of cholesterol levels that may peak over 200 milligrams on a given blood test does not necessarily mean that the inflammatory disease of atherosclerotic plaque formation is occurring in the artery walls. This also explains why many people have heart attacks with cholesterol levels well below 200 milligrams per deciliter. Their total cholesterol may not be elevated, but they have badly damaged their arteries and are promoting the inflammatory fire of plaque formation through their daily diet and lifestyle practices. It all depends on how one treats their arteries. Now, it's true that in today's societies, people eating a standard Western diet with the elevated cholesterol levels have a higher risk of having a heart attack. But as I implied, it's likely because the higher LDL number likely indicates the people who are eating the burgers and abusing their arteries and spawning plaque formation rather than being the sole cause of the atherosclerosis. A long-term vegan whose plant-rich diet is artery-friendly may have a liver that's churning out some extra cholesterol on a given day for its own reasons, but that may well not be indicating artery disease. The message is that both doctors and patients will benefit by moving beyond what I call the tyranny of the cholesterol numbers, where an elevated cholesterol number automatically means a prescription for statins, all the while the cardiologist is never mentioning the true cause of plaque formation, self-inflicted artery damage from one's overall diet and lifestyle. Currently, most cardiologists view the formation of atherosclerotic plaques as a relentlessly progressive part of aging because they don't prevail on their patients to change their diet, and thus the artery injury continues. And many of them feel, oh, everybody's eventually going to uh, get clogged arteries and need stentins and bypasses. <laughs> That's right, doctor, that will become a self-fulfilling prophecy if you don't talk to the patient about changing to a plant-based diet. That's exactly what you're going to see. But the groundbreaking work of researchers like Dr. Dean Ornish and Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn have conclusively shown that atherosclerosis is indeed an eminently reversible disease. Here's how a healthy diet can bring about the melting away of atherosclerotic plaques. A plaque-reversing, artery-healing diet is a whole food, plant-based diet, especially heavy in dark green leafy vegetables, a generous helping of which is eaten frequently during the day, and a diet free of vegetable oils, processed sugars, and excessive salt. Now, there's a good reason behind this strategy as it first removes the ingested cholesterol from meats and dairy products, as well as the artery-injuring, plaque-stimulating, oxidizing agents like fried foods and processed sugary junk foods. At the same time, it substitutes for them the antioxidant molecules shown here, such as resveratrol, sulforaphane, isothiocyanates, and lycopenes that willingly donate their electrons so your cholesterol molecules and macrophages don't have to. Keeping high levels of these free radical quenching molecules in the blood hour after hour, day after day, week after week, allows these antioxidants to seep into the wall of the arteries and neutralize the free radicals that may be present. Here you see the process. 
In the blue circle, you can see antioxidants such as resveratrol and others diffuse into the artery walls and encounter the free radicals that they willingly donate their electrons to and thus quench the free radicals so the macrophages don't have to. As a result, the macrophages leave the plaque. They outmigrate, as seen in the upper right section of this diagram indicated by the sinewy arrows there leading out of the artery wall. Consequently, these plaques get smaller and smaller and smaller, and the precious endothelial lining reestablishes itself, not by magic, but because your bone marrow is constantly sending out showers of stem cells that reupholster the inner lining of the artery walls, like laying down new paving stones, and the endothelial lining repairs itself and returns back into a fairly healthy artery once more. If you want visual proof of this process, you can see it in the dramatic findings of this arteriogram from a 46-year-old surgeon with severe blood vessel disease. To understand what you're seeing here, you need to know that the entire artery, which has been injected with dye, should be as wide as the upper part of the dye column. The rat-eaten appearance of the arterial dye column labeled distal LAD in that section that appearance is from the atherosclerotic plaques intruding into the blood vessel's blood flow channel. After 22 months on a whole food plant-based diet, these plaques significantly melted down in size, and this frightening picture becomes this picture on the right. Most importantly, the patient's clinical improvements paralleled his arteriographic improvement as his chest pain disappeared and he is able to walk normal distances without pain or shortness of breath. We've known of this potential for dramatic reversal of atherosclerotic coronary artery disease for well over 40 years. Here's Dr. Frey Ellis's report of a man with crippling angina, the crushing chest pain that results from clogged arteries being unable to deliver sufficient oxygen carrying blood to the heart muscle, who reversed his vascular disease with a whole food plant-based diet and within six months was climbing mountains in the Lake District of England. Here you see the same improvement in blood flow in this perfusion scan of the heart. The reddish coloration is indicating more blood flow, which is good. The blue and green areas show lack of blood flow. <clears throat> As the whole food plant-based diet permeates the heart muscle tissue and the artery walls, it permits the inflammation to subside and for the artery walls to relax. And as this happens, the blood flow increases dramatically throughout the heart. And in just 14 days on a healthy diet, this scan looks like this scan. This is quite an improvement in only two weeks on a whole food plant-based diet, again, free of vegetable oils uh, and uh, refined sugars and excess salt. In fact, blood vessels throughout the body open up and increase blood flow to all organs. <laughs> that often brings welcome results for everyone involved in the household. So, should you worry about your cholesterol numbers if you are eating a whole food plant-based diet for real? Remembering that cholesterol is not an evil molecule and that your liver makes it so your adrenal glands can synthesize steroid hormones and your genitals can synthesize sex hormones. As long as not, one is not eating anyone else's cholesterol from cows and pigs and chickens and other animals, and your inflammatory markers are low, I think you can relax and trust your liver to keep just as much cholesterol in your bloodstream as needed so your tissues can create these vital molecules. So, should you have your inflammatory markers measured? The results can be a motivating factor for people, and I used to order a lot of these inflammatory panels. But I do it much less often lately because it's become evident that no matter what the numbers say, the indicated course of action is always the same. Stop eating artery-injuring meat, sugars, oils, and processed foods. Stop smoking and start eating way more fruits and vegetables, whole fruits and vegetables, of course. Now, another test that can be informative regarding the health of your arteries is an ultrasound scan of the carotid arteries in your neck that brings blood flow to your brain. It's a painless test that your doctor can order that is done with the same equipment that's used with pregnant women to see how their unborn baby is doing. 
A technician performs a study and the doctor reviews the results. Here you see a normal ultrasound scan on the upper right with a clean artery and normal thickness of the lining tissue. In the bottom right image, you see the inner lining becoming thicker, a sign of inflammation and early artery disease which your doctor can detect. Of course, the scan can also show obvious, fully developed plaque formation as shown by the arrows in these diagrams. Dramatic test results, but the treatment is still the same. If the blood test showing artery inflammation or the ultrasound scan show sign of artery disease, the patient's move is to fully and seriously adopt a whole food plant-based dietary program shown to reverse artery disease, like that presented in Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's landmark book, Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease. Now, I would not be adverse to a doctor prescribing a 6 or 12 month course of statins that may reduce the chances of an acute artery blockage, but the main artery healing is being done by the whole food plant-based diet. And after 12 months of that eating style, the statins are probably contributing little and may be causing other problems. And consultation between the doctor and the patient is warranted to see if the statins can be safely stopped, which in my opinion, they most often can be. I have 30-year vegans with cholesterol levels that hover around or over 200 milligrams per deciliter, but whose inflammatory markers are stone-cold negative and whose ultrasound scans are completely normal, thus indicating no inflammatory processes occurring in their artery walls. I feel these people do not need to worry about their total cholesterol levels, and they surely do not need to be taking statin drugs and stopping their own livers from creating this life-sustaining molecule. So please understand the difference between these two states one of benign liver-generated cholesterol whose levels that might be over the mythic level of 150 or even 200 milligrams per deciliter, but with no inflammation, no plaque formation occurring in the artery walls, and this situation, which is active inflammatory atherosclerotic plaque formation burrowing away in the wall of the arteries from repeated foodborne arterial injury two totally different situations, but ones that can get conflated if you only look at the total cholesterol numbers because both these folks may have elevated cholesterol numbers, but one has serious artery disease and the other does not. My wish is for cardiologists to stop acting as fear-filled technicians, bouncing off these blood test numbers and reflexly prescribing statins based upon mere cholesterol levels and particle size, and to start being biologists again, focusing on assessing the health of the artery walls, and if inflammation is present, to prescribe the definitive reversal strategy of a whole food plant-based diet along with the cessation of smoking and other activities that lead to artery injury and plaque formation. Now, if one has serious symptomatic artery disease with angina or mini strokes, I wouldn't object to a course of statins for six or 12 months to help quell the inflammation and stabilize the artery walls. But I don't believe a lifetime of statin therapy is warranted if a whole food plant-based diet is rigorously followed. Now, if one has been on statins for quite a while and then tapers them off, the chemical breaks are taken off the liver's cholesterol-making ability. As a result, there's often an expected rebound elevation of cholesterol levels in the blood for a few weeks. But in view of what we have, that we have considered, I think that rise is usually transient and should not pose a threat to the owner of the arteries. If your doctor is completely opposed to any of her or his patients ever getting off statin therapy, Perhaps you should search for a doctor who appreciates the value of plant-based nutrition and who is willing to work with you to help you earn a drug-free life. This is certainly possible and worthwhile pursuing. To summarize, I believe that if you are eating a whole food plant-based diet, sending meal after meal of colorful salads and frequent helpings of kale, chard, broccoli, carrots, sweet potatoes through your arteries, thus bathing your artery walls in an antioxidant-rich soup of molecules day after day, 
I do not feel you have to worry if your liver decides that on a given day it needs to keep 200 milligrams or more of cholesterol in your bloodstream so your body can get on with its steroid chemistry and other vital function. Also remember that cholesterol levels are not chisels in stone. They change from day to day, week to week. And on a daily diet of food shown here, your artery should be getting healthier with every meal. Now, what about triglycerides? Uh, I feel that elevated triglycerides, and most physicians agree, that uh, elevated triglyceride levels are usually from eating way too many simple sugars, including fruit juices and high fructose corn syrup and uh, candies, etc. And these are a sign that these artery injury foods should be sharply reduced or preferably eliminated altogether. So, I would urge you not to eat like Joe or Jane Average shown here. If these folks change their food choices, they should be able to avoid the needs for statins and stents, though they will definitely earn them if they don't change from their current Western dietary patterns. The bargain they must make to escape the tyranny of the numbers is to eat an antioxidant-rich, whole-food, plant-based diet for real and for the long term. They also need to take vitamin B12 a couple times a week to avoid elevated levels of artery-damaging homocysteine. They need to not smoke. They need to maintain a normal weight, which usually happens automatically on on a whole food plant-based diet, and take a walk every day to keep their blood circulating and smile frequently to keep their positive hormone balances going. Remember, your arteries are never not looking. <laughs> they know all about and have to deal with every piece of food you put in your mouth, for good or ill. So to paraphrase Shakespeare, who said, To thine own self be true, I say, To thine own health be true. And for this discussion, To thine own arteries be true. And that means eating a whole food plant-based diet, and your cholesterol numbers will take care of themselves. Assuming you do not have congenitally high cholesterol numbers on a genetic basis, which will require special care from a skilled physician, your lipid numbers should not pose a risk to your health, even if they're a bit higher than the TV commercials and your doctor think they should be. Trust your body. It knows what to do when you feed it the whole plant-based foods that it was meant to run on. Dr. Michael Clapper here, and I want to thank you for visiting my channel and for watching this video. I've got a lot more content that I'm creating to answer health-related questions for you, my viewers. So please uh, subscribe to my channel down here. And if you found this video helpful, please like it and comment on it. Thanks for helping to spread the word about the power of whole food plant-based nutrition to heal both people and the planet.